It's day two of curriculum week and today I'm here to show you guys what my upcoming eighth grader will be using for next year. This is my eighth grader with special needs. So I'm not only going to show you the curriculum we're making, but kind of why I picked these things. If you notice from yesterday's video, I have a second eighth grader and they are doing very different things because they have very different needs. So you'll get to see kind of how we're making these adaptions and what we're doing to prepare him for the future. So let's get started. Let's start with language arts for him because there is a lot of components for language arts for my son. Most kids in the eighth grade year have started to shave away some of those things that they've mastered. They are no longer having reading instruction. They are no longer sometimes having spelling or having grammar. But for my son, all of those things still very much apply because they are such a struggle. We need to continue working on each of those things. So here's what we've got. For actual reading instruction, he's going to continue using the Diana Craft Right Brain Reading Phonics Program. This includes readers that he will be working on. We are hoping to get through all of the level two readers as well as Lord willing the level three readers we will see how it's going it is definitely um, been picking up and improving a lot this year and hoping that we'll continue that pace and maybe even pick up a little bit more in next year also with the Dynacraft right brain reading program there are different exercises he does that help him cross midline and work on a lot of different skills one of those is the writing eight worksheets it looks like this and this is an exercise he does every single day he'll continue to do that as well well. For spelling, we also use the Dynacraft program and we use these special cards. There's several for each of the levels and with them, he has these pictures that are embedded into the picture themselves. There's a whole method for learning how to do this, but essentially he is able to work through all of these spelling words and more in a year. And it's one of the first things that's really stuck for him. The next thing we'll be using for language arts for vocabulary is vocabulary cartoons. So we did book one of this this past year and we'll be going into SAT prep for these. These are great because they use mnemonic devices to help your children memorize these words. So here's gossamer and it's linked to customer and it, it gives you examples and visuals to go along with it. And I cannot even tell you how many words he's been able to memorize this year and truly understand the meaning thanks to these mnemonic devices and using these pictures. Something new we will be doing for language arts this year will be fix it grammar. So his siblings have done fix it grammar for years now and I am finally ready to start him in it. With fix it grammar, you are simply editing and labeling one sentence a day and then you are rewriting it. This has been something I have held off on and not because he doesn't have the comprehension for it, but because his reading level wasn't there. But ready or not, we're going to jump in. It might take me helping a little bit more. I'm hoping I'll be able to just sit down while I'm working with other kids and read the sentence for him and he'll be able to label and do most of it. But we'll see. Adaptions have to be made constantly and I'm okay with that. If he picks up quickly on this, we will quickly go through this and try to get into book two by the end of the year. But if we just stay on book one, that's totally fine. It's, it's all about forward motion for our family. It's not about always hitting all the benchmarks at the deemed appropriate places. Another big thing that we are starting this year, I'm a little excited and very nervous about it, is we are starting Structure and Style Year One Level A. So this one is something that, again, we have held back on just because of reading level and not being there. It is going to involve a lot of me as a teacher being involved with him because his reading level still isn't quite up to that par. However, I didn't decide to go with like community people and places, which is probably a little bit more where his reading level is because he has already done that before and I felt like reintroducing it now would be very babyish to him and kind of insulting so I figured we'll just do this with a lot of helps if we need to adjust we will but I really want to spend a lot of this year working on helping him use adaptive technology and getting ready to go into high school in just another year so I want him to have the skills he needs um, and the adaptive technology and be familiar with it so I am planning to use a lot more voice to text options for him writing his keywords outlines and his papers for this program those are not complete easy button options right if you want a punctuation mark or something capitalized you have to verbally cue the program to do it and they're not perfect so you have to reread and fix mistakes that it might make from your dictation so it's something I want him to get used to um, I want him to start working with those kinds of programs I think we're also going to be utilizing the program Grammarly to help him with editing his papers um, I don't know we'll see I'm not 100% sold on that yet if you guys 
guys have experience using that program, let me know down in the comments. The final thing for language arts is actually working on literature. Last year we did sunlight, but this year I wanted something a little bit different literature wise. And I was really torn with this son, whether or not to pick literature that was at his reading level or literature that was at his cognitive level and was really, really torn back and forth until I found this program from IEW. It is actually a teacher program that teaches you how to teach the classics, how to teach literature to your kids, whether they are in kindergarten all the way up through the end of high school. It teaches you how to use these techniques to apply to any book, whether it's a picture book or a chapter book or something huge, thick, whatever, and how to teach your kids different questions to be able to jump into literary analysis and things at an age appropriate level. I thought this would be a perfect program for him because it will allow me to be able to apply these principles to books that he can cognitively understand that he's doing on audiobook as well as that he is reading that are more at his reading level than at his cognitive level. So I'm really excited about that. We'll dive into it. We'll see how it goes. I am hoping to do a video explaining more of this as I get into the training myself and how we plan to utilize it. So subscribe so you won't miss out on that. Whew. Now that we have language arts out of the way, let's talk about some of the other subjects we'll be doing this next year. First is math. We will be doing a pre-algebra with teaching textbooks next year. I'm really excited about this. I am going to start making adaptions of starting to introduce and letting my sons use calculators this next year. I think at times, um, but I feel like they're ready for that. I feel like there is still a lot of math that they're having to understand. He does not have his multiplications mastered by any stretch of the imagination, but he has a lot of working memory issues with all of his diagnoses. And I just feel like that is not a hill I'm ready to die on. We do all walk around with calculators in our pockets now that we have phones. And so I'm okay if he learns how to utilize that properly. And there's still a lot of math that is involved, even with using the calculator. For history this year, we will be using BiblioPlan year four. This is going over modern history. There will be readers assigned that I will give them. And the nice thing is about that literature program is because you can pick whatever readers you want for your child, we can use the literary analysis tools on the readers he's assigned to read for the subject. So it kind of combines subjects into one. For science, we are going to be using anatomy and physiology. I mentioned this yesterday, but my husband is going back to school for pre-nursing and he will be taking anatomy and physiology in college this year. And so we thought this would be kind of a missed opportunity if we didn't have the boys go through it as well and get to dig into it more and get to kind of learn alongside their dad. They can kind of help them study. He can kind of help them understand things. I think it'll be a really fun dynamic. Yes, this is a Young Explorer series. Yes, this is designed for first through sixth grade. And yes, my boys are going into eighth grade. However, anatomy and physiology is definitely one of the more intense versions of the Young Explorer series by far. And so I have no problems signing this for my eighth grader. We'll do all the readings together and all of the experiments. And then they've got the student journal that has additional uh, books for them to look up, additional experiments, additional readings. And we're going to assign a lot of those this year to make sure that it's up to grade level. Um, but I'm really not worried about that because I know there's so much to glean from these. I learned so much from these even as an adult. For Bible, I am going to be doing an entire video of all the things we plan to use for Bible next year because it's something that we don't view as just a one singular subject and more so as something that is interwoven into all areas of life. But one of the text that we will be using next year with my three oldest is Bible Doctrine for Older Kids. This is done by Joel Beakey's brother, James, and it's just a great textbook. It has um, tests or review questions, however you want to do it in there. Um, I'm not sure whether we'll actually utilize those or just do those more orally. It includes a lot of different stories of different famous people um, and different situations. It goes over a lot of like the Heidelberg Catechism. It has great vocabulary lists and so many other things. So I think this will be a really great one to do, obviously, in addition to reading scripture, to studying scripture, and all the other things that I'll mention in that video that'll come out later this summer. Finally, the last two things we're going to look at is he is going to be taking logic. This will be a high school level course that he will be taking this next year. This is the art of argument. If this cover looks different than what you're used to seeing, that is because this is the newly released art of argument, the new edition um, that Classical Academic Press is putting out. It is not going to be available, I believe, until May, um, but I will leave the link down below where you guys can go check it out. Um, this is so amazing. My mom used this program with my siblings growing up. She used a lot of different logic programs. As she said, this one by far 
was the absolute best. And this new addition has made some really cool changes. I'll have a video coming out comparing the two so you can see the old version versus the new version coming up soon as well. But this is something I'm really excited about doing. They'll be doing it all year long, but it will count as a half credit for their high school year. Finally, for my eighth grader, we always try to find something that fits my child's interests, especially in these older years. We want to find something that really could be something they could build off on for a potential career. And one thing my son is really interested in is fixing up cars and learning more about cars. And he is really loving this. So I was trying to find a way with my husband going back to school and him maybe not being quite as available to do as much one-on-one -on -one teaching, trying to find a way to sort of outsource that learning. And I found a really amazing program. I'm so excited about it. It's called How Car Works. And it is an online video-based curriculum or course course that you can go through. It has thousands of videos that are broken up into bite-sized pieces where this instructor who is very funny and engaging takes apart a car completely down to nothing and then builds it back up piece by piece walking the viewer through each piece and what it does. It has a lot of like 3D components. You get to see inside all of the pieces. The quality of production value is amazing. Now this course that is being put out is not necessarily geared towards kids per se. I think it's just a general course is my understanding. It does have a PDF textbook that I believe is over 200 pages. Um, I'm not planning to print that. I'm planning to have him just access that on the tablet. It is really, really, really cool. And then he'll go through the different videos and get to learn a lot about cars and how engines work and be able to open the hood of any car and see inside and understand all of the parts and what they do. I'm really excited about this program, but I'm also excited to let you guys know about it right now because the program is actually not fully completed. It is very close. As far as I know, the projected deadline is May of 2023 to complete this program. If you purchase the program, this is not an affiliate. This is just literally something I found and I'm so, I'm so excited about. I had to share it is that if you join the program or sign up for it, you'll have access to everything he's already created, which he's already created a lot and anything he creates in the future for this particular program for only $25, like a one-time fee. $25. And I've purchased my pass for him and it's a lifetime membership. Already started digging into some of the videos and they look amazing. It's going to be perfect for him as he's a highly visual learner and doesn't rely too heavily on the reading component. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe and stick around because tomorrow I will have my seventh graders picks for the homeschool year. And then we're going to keep going all the way through the end of the week till we get all the way down to my kindergartner. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.